Physicists say we live in a black hole, not metaphorically, not emotionally, and not just during tax season, but literally inside a black hole. And not just this, a group of researchers has published a paper claiming that we've got the Big Bang wrong. It was actually the collapse of an earlier universe to a black hole, which we now live in. That sounds wild. Let's have a look. The idea that we live inside a black hole isn't entirely new. The thing is that on the inside, black holes can look very similar to our universe, so similar that we couldn't tell the difference. To understand why this isn't as nutty as it sounds, I need to make a brief excursion into how Einstein's theory of general relativity works. Einstein's theory connects the spatial distribution of energy of all types, including mass, with the dynamical behavior of space itself. The most commonly used distribution of energy is one that's perfectly even, the same everywhere and in each direction. Because physicists like simple things. Of course, that isn't realistic. There's no such thing as a perfectly even distribution or perfect anything. But in many cases, we expect this to give us a good approximation. It's like saying, strictly speaking, pizza isn't the perfect food, but in many cases it's a good approximation, especially under peer review. We can use this even distribution of energy to describe the entire universe on average, approximately. And here's the thing, we can also use it to describe how stars collapse on average approximately. It's just that for a collapsing star, we cut off this energy distribution at some radius, like a cookie cutter, so to speak. And then outside, we attach vacuum. Once we've done that, the only difference is that for the star, the energy distribution contracts, whereas for our present universe, it expands. You see, these two cases are surprisingly similar except for the direction of the dynamics, so let's talk about that. If matter collapses to form a black hole, then this will technically, mathematically, create a singularity, an instance of infinite energy density where time ends. Physicists think, however, that this can't be correct. They believe that this just means our current theories are insufficient. They think there are effects of quantum gravity or quantum fluctuations of space and time that prevent and energy density from becoming truly infinite, because much like nothing perfect is real, infinities aren't real either. If that's correct, and energy density just can't go to infinity, which is very plausible, what will happen is that the collapse of matter stalls and then turns into an expansion. And that then looks mathematically almost the same as our expanding universe almost, except for three differences. The first is that, well, the universe is now inside of a black hole. Second, it isn't actually infinitely large. It must have a boundary somewhere because think of the cookie cutting. And third, the space on the inside isn't entirely flat. It's like when you cut out a circle from a very large sphere, that circle will be almost flat, but not entirely. So they're slightly different. However, the boundary may be so far away and space so nearly flat that we wouldn't notice the difference. What's new in the recent paper? The authors have looked at just how this transition from the collapsing matter to an expanding universe could happen. They say the collapsing matter is predominantly made of fermions, particles like electrons and quarks. These particles famously don't like to share places. You can't put two of them in the same location. This is the Pauli exclusion principle. It's the reason why electrons sit on shelves around atoms. The authors now postulate that there is such an exclusion principle at super high densities, and that's what prevents the singularity. It also generates negative pressure, which then causes an expansion. So the mechanism is this. Matter collapses inside a black hole, reaches a maximum possible density, the pressure becomes negative, and that drives a rapid expansion. This then looks almost exactly like standard cosmology, but inside a black hole. And here is the cool thing about this idea. They say that this negative pressure never goes away. It's what we call the cosmological constant. 
But once you identify these two things with each other, this tells you how large the black hole is. And that in turn tells you how large the curvature of space is. This means that they have a testable prediction. Our universe isn't entirely flat and the curvature can't be arbitrarily small, so it should become measurable soon. By the way, this video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you remember. What are we to make of this? I think that this idea is mathematically correct. The question is whether it makes physical sense. In white dwarfs or neutron stars, it's indeed the Pauli exclusion principle that prevents the stars from collapsing under the pressure of their own gravity. However, the exclusion principle for the known types of matter will not withstand arbitrarily large pressure. This is why black holes can form in the first place. Their gravitational pressure is beyond the threshold that the exclusion principle can withstand. So the authors of the paper must postulate another exclusion principle that's fundamental and ultimate to make it work. It's an ad hoc assumption. However, ad hoc or not, I think it's indeed plausible that quantum gravity does something to prevent singularities. So at least to me, this idea actually makes a lot of sense. On the bullshit meter, I give it a 5 out of 10 because it's actually a mathematical mathematically lean idea that's very close to standard cosmology. It's half bullshit because I don't buy the stuff with the exclusion principle. So the next time someone tells you the universe came from nothing, you can say, actually, it could have come from a collapsing hyperdense ball of degenerate fermionic matter, and that'll be the end of that dinner conversation. How does that work? Why is that so? If those are questions you also like to ask, you should really have a look at Brilliant. I found it to be the perfect way to turn curiosity into understanding one small step at a time. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their newly updated maths courses. No matter how abstract the topic seems, Brilliant's courses have intuitive visualizations that really click into my brain. And Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and balance theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.